Hello, and welcome to BS Paranormal's Just the Evidence. Um, this is the first Just the Evidence episode we're doing for 2021, and I am happy to um, bring this back. I think I enjoy making these episodes more than I do the full episodes. Um, I'm not the best editor in the world, as you've seen if you've watched some of our past episodes. Um, I think I'm getting a little bit better, but I'm still a little... Uh, rough around the edges when it comes to that. So these are pretty easy. I just plug in my uh, take on the evidence and then let you decide for yourself if you think I'm right or wrong. Um, and that's the beauty of our channel is we give our point of view, but by no means do we think that our audience is limited to our opinions of it. Um, so that being said, this format is typically shorter than the average episode even though I do this minute-long exposition. So, thank you for watching this, and here we go. So, the first piece of evidence that we have at the Patterson Inn um, is from a flash uh, photograph from inside the Biltmore Room. Um, the Biltmore Room is one of the more haunted rooms at the Patterson Inn. Um, it's supposed to host the spirit of Catherine uh, Patterson. And uh, there's a little portrait of her up in the Biltmore Room, and um, it was interesting to stay there, yeah, to stay there, to say the least. Um, so this first piece of evidence is an orb. You're going to get the initial picture, and then I kind of zoomed in on it, drew a red circle around it. So, our take on this picture, um, one, Bradley and I, we, we just don't buy into orbs. Um, honestly, we've gotten a little bit more brazen in our approach to them, and we kind of just outright mock orbs. Like, it's always a bug, it's always dust or a glare. Like, it's one of those three things. So, the second piece of evidence from the uh, Patterson Inn is actually my second favorite. Um, it's because I really don't have a great explanation for it. Um, so I think I'm going to let you take a look at it. I'm going to talk about it and then I'll let you take another look at it. So here's the first look. So what strikes me as strange is you can kind of see it coming in, bobbing up and down and then just going away. Most bugs like dart or they go up or they go down they might even go in circles but they don't really bob like that um so i found that one peculiar could it be a bug or something that i didn't notice yeah but i will tell you this hotel was dust free and bug free like i went so far as to rub my finger over like the top of the dressers and the top of the picture frames and the tops of the uh, canopies for the bed, no dust on my finger. Like it was so well done um, in terms of upkeep and cleanliness. Um, it was the middle of February. We just had a snowstorm that night. It's not the time of the year in Colorado where bugs are out and about, even indoors. So I don't know. Like, that one's weird to me. Here it is again. Let us know what you think. So, the next one, um, I posted to social media before the episode came out. Had some pretty positive, uh, I guess you could say feedback on it. You know, got a few likes on the Insta. Um, but it was the pillar of light from the, uh, from the turret area. I had to remember where it was. Um, so this pillar of light um, just pops up on the camera. After playing around for a little bit longer after I took this photo, I realized that my camera casts a glare through the bottom of one window, and I guess it refracts up and reflects out back into the camera lens because you have to hit it at just the right angle to replicate that photo. So um, this one I know is not paranormal, but it was interesting. Uh, it was kind of interesting to discover this 
light phenomena that I can create. Um, so here's a picture of that. Again, I know it's not paranormal, but it was interesting to kind of like incorporate it into the episode. Um, do you think maybe I overthought it? You know, may maybe there's something else there, but I, I, I replicated it, so I don't think there is. But take a look. So the next piece of evidence is um, pretty interesting. I had an opportunity to um, investigate around the whole house. So I didn't just stay upstairs. I didn't stay in the turret. I didn't stay in my room. Um, I had the opportunity to investigate the foyer, the, um, the I guess it would be the lobby sitting area. Um, and then I had the opportunity to investigate the DB room or the dead baby room and the bar that both reside downstairs. Um, and it was fascinating um, to kind of go down there and be in that space because I had a couple of interesting things happen that first night. Um, I guess I want to talk about the, uh, the event in the uh, DB room or dead baby room. I basically ended up going to the DB room and I don't know what happened, but my EMF detector just flashed up. Um, right now, again, it's been almost a year later. It's like, this is October and that was February. So it's been a while, eight months. Um, I don't remember the exact number it jumped up to, but it, turned the light on the EMF detector red. Like, it, it bumped up to red. It wasn't a green light. It wasn't just a quick flicker of numbers. It was enough to make the light flash red because I looked down and I was like, what the crap? I don't know. It was a strange fluctuation. Um, I didn't feel creeped out. I didn't feel weird in there. I actually stayed in there with the lights off for between the two nights, like two hours. Um, it was a cool space. Um, it was neat to be in that space just because it did have this dark room, um, silent, creepy factor. Um, one thing I did learn is you can hear the toilets flush from uh, the uh, rooms upstairs. Um, that did startle me the first time it happened. So I was like, oh, okay, well, that's a thing. Um, but nothing paranormal in there except for that one little burst. Um, upon talking to the owner of the hotel, he believes that it's the um, little girl who kind of roams the basement. Um, there are stories of a little girl who roams around the house, just goes to various places. And he thinks that as I was walking in that space, I disturbed her and she ran away. Um, and in her process of her running away, she activated my EMF meter and um, that's what it was. So that's kind of like just my story to you. Um, again, I didn't do a great job of articulating that in the episode, but um, that's kind of that story. The next piece of evidence I want to talk about um, is an EVP in a bar. So I'm going to let you listen to it, and then I'm going to give my take on it. So here's that EVP at the bar. So for me, it's too garbled to make out. It sounds like it's trying to talk over me or like I'm not giving it a chance to talk. Um, it's talking with me. So I really can't hear it, hear or make out what's being said over me. Um, we do have another EVP that happened a little bit later. So here's that uh, EVP. Hey, what? How about you shake my hand? Tell you what, how about you shake my hand? So, I'm going to let you hear it again a few more times, and I'm going to kind of go over what I think was happening. Tell you what, how about you shake my hand? Tell you what, how about you shake my hand? So, um, as you saw from the clip, we determined that it actually tells me no, it did not want to shake my hand. 
Um, which is fair. I, I don't always make myself the most likable person in the world. Um, and if this is an intelligent spirit, it's not going to be forced or mandated to shake my hand in any way. It's going to make its own choices. So, like, maybe it decided I wasn't the right person to interact with him. So, um, shake my hand. I hear no. Um, one person I let listen to it said they think it might say go, as in get out of here. Um, either way, I think it's pretty clear that there was kind of a uh, negative interaction between the two of us. Which brings me to the biggest evidence that occurred over the two nights in the bar. Um, so, prior to these two EVPs, um, and I, again, I repeat, prior to both, there was a moment, because I spent about an hour and a half down there, um, there was a moment where I'm sitting down earlier, about an hour earlier, uh, before the handshake EVP, and I'm just talking. Honestly, I'm talking out my ass. Like, I'm not saying too much of any consequence. And as I'm talking, I heard a noise from the door. It sounded like the doorknob jiggling, and then you can actually hear uh, someone walking on the steps. So, this is that clip. I'm just going to let you watch it, and then I'll kind of give my take on it. So, here it is. Having this many people in your house? So, um, when I was talking to the owner, um, I honestly didn't hear the footsteps until he brought it up when I was showing him the evidence. He was like, you can hear footsteps there. And I listened to him. I'm like, you can. Um, too bad I already kind of produced the episode. There's two explanations for me. One is another guest was going to come down and they saw I was down there, so they chose not to. Maybe another guest was there doing what I was doing, paranormal investigating, and we just ended up trading off times. Maybe he was doing an investigation after I went to bed. I don't know. Um, but my point is, is that could have been a guest. I did not go and look. Um, I should have. I didn't think about it. Like, for me, it was just like the doorknob is jiggling. I had IR pointed on it. It's all good. Whatever. Um, so I kind of left the bar that night, not thinking about that doorknob thing happening. Again, I didn't hear the footsteps until later on when it was pointed out to me by the owner in the evidence review. So I didn't know that was even happening. Um, so I go back upstairs and go to bed. The next night... Um, I kind of do the same rotation of things. I decided not to do the turrets, um, the turret space, that little hallway there. I got nothing the night before. It did not interest me to go back. Um, I felt like the bar and uh, the dead baby room and the room I was staying in were more consequential to the investigation. So I stayed in those three spaces. Um, early in the night, I got nothing in my room. In fact, I got nothing in my room through this whole investigation until the very end. Um, I guess you could count the orb at the beginning, but I already made my perspective on that clear. Um, I guess the bobbing light too. So I got a little something in the room, but not not that much. Not Nothing that like blew my mind. Um, so I'm down in the bar. By the way, I got nothing in the dead baby room after that K2 or the EMF bump. Nothing else happened at all. So I'm in the bar. And when I go in, because of the night before the doorknob jiggling, I wanted to make sure the door was absolutely shut. I wanted to make sure it was shut and closed and latched. I did that. And this is the video evidence that I double-checked myself. I made absolutely sure that door was not going to open. All right, and since I'm down here... Just secure the door. All right, and 
since I'm down here, just secure the door. So I'm just doing the investigation and again, this is something I did not hear with my ears, but the door unlatched. And this is the audio clip that um, myself, Bradley, the owner, and a few other uh, folks who I got some opinions from said, I think this is the sound of the door unlatching. So this is that. They've caught anything on camera in this room. So I'm assuming that. What do you think? Do you think that's the sound of the door unlatching? Um, nevertheless, when I left the room after having a whole bunch of nothing, um, I will say I felt more creeped out on night one than night two. And night one, um, was, I, I don't know what it was. It was just a little slightly creepier down there. Night two, I was having a great time. I felt like I was alone. So I get up, I leave after about an hour and a half, two hours of nothing on night two. I go to the door and the door I secured, the one I made sure I latched. On camera, I made sure I latched it. So I had proof that I latched it. it was open. It was unlatched. It wasn't wide open. It wasn't like beckoning me to leave, but the door was unlatched. Um, so you might notice in the episode that I played with the doorknob a little bit and it didn't take much to unlatch it. Um, it doesn't take much force to turn the knob. It still takes force. Um, Cause once you twist the knob enough to unlatch it, it will open to the point of unlatching just like it shows in the video. So uh, here's me discovering that the door unlatched. Okay. Um. Okay, I just switched from a thermal to regular camera. Um, you might have noticed on the video, I went out of my way to ensure this door was closed. And you can uh, clearly see it is unlatched. Singing, maybe this is something that happens every night, you know, like a residual effect or a residual energy, um, the residual kinetic movement that occurs at night, but if you have it locked, you're not going to notice it because it doesn't unlatch itself. Um, so that's kind of where my mind went with that. It doesn't really tell me it's an intelligent haunt, um, but what tells me that is the EVP from the night before that no when I asked for a handshake. That's kind of like, okay, well, that's a clear response. Well, it wasn't clear, but it was a response. Um, so the door unlatching was an interesting event. So I go upstairs and I decide that I'm done with the basement. I didn't get anything in the dead baby room staying in there for 45 minutes. Um, nothing else in the bar other than the door on night two. It's past 3 a.m. I'm tired. I go up to the room to go to bed. Um, my wife's already asleep and I go in trying to be as quiet as possible. Um, one of our suitcases was sideways on the floor. Um, I assumed it was either Eric or I who knocked it over. And as I walk in, so like I have all my stuff bundled up in my arms. But one of the things I've, I've got, I kind of got in the habit of doing this on all my investigations. Really, it started at the uh, Hotel de Funiac last year. Whenever I have all my gear in my hands, I always have an audio recorder on or at least have an audio recorder on me. So my audio recorder was in my right hand and I walk into the room and I hear a voice. It's not my wife. She does talk in her sleep sometimes, but I know my wife's voice. It wasn't her. Flip on the audio recorder. I go to set the stuff on the bed. Um, when I set the stuff on the bed, I, uh, have the audio recorder still in my hand. I go to put it on a chair that's toward the foot of the bed, but also like toward a wall. Um, so it was like you had, so uh, camera. Okay. So bed, chair, and then like between the bed and the chair is a suitcase kind of sideways on the floor. Um, and 
I put the audio recorder on like the arm of the chair and then I apologize for leaving the room a mess, talking about my luggage just kind of being there in the middle of the floor. So luggage in the middle of the floor, I apologize. This is the EVP I got from that moment. So to date, it is the best EVP I think we have to this point right now um, that you're seeing this. Um, so there's another way I said that. So from May 2020 to February 2021, this is the best EVP we have. Um, it, again, I am talking, like I'm whispering, I'm sorry for leaving the room in a mess. But you can clearly hear, come, there's trouble. I don't know what to make of that. Um, you know, at the time of filming this, there, I mean, it was three in the morning. Again, my wife's asleep. You could... You could hear someone outside talking. Um, and in full transparency, you can hear the people in the room across the hall through the uh, air vents. They're connected. You, I heard them all day. I was in there going over uh, night one evidence all day. And their voices was fairly clear. Um, without missing too much of the uh, context. Could it have been someone over there? Maybe. I don't know why the audio recorder would pick it up and I not hear it. Um, if it was someone outside, again, I feel like I would hear it because I acknowledged every voice from outside throughout this whole investigation. When I was sitting in the turret, I heard a whole bunch of conversations. I heard voices, dogs barking, um, ice scrapers, people shoveling. Um, you could hear people shoveling snow in, uh, the very beginning of the episode. This wasn't that. Um, and I don't know who in the 21st century says, come, there's trouble. People are just like, get in here right now, emergency or something like that. You know, like we don't say, come, there's trouble. So... It's, it was very interesting to catch that EVP. Um, and honestly, like, this was one of those I have a very hard time considering the rational. Um, and I feel like the more I do paranormal investigations, the less rational things are getting. <laughs> and I'm having a harder and harder time uh, coming up with serious explanations. Um because this is one of those. So the door opening, you know what? Hot, cold, wood, metal, expanding, contracting. Maybe something was happening there. The door opened. The door delatched. Okay. I, I Honestly, I buy that. I do. Skeptically, yeah. Sci scientifically, yeah. I, I buy that. that. That is possible. Um, and it's... Logical. The little light bobbing up and down, could it be an insect? Um, again, I'm not an expert on insect behavior and how they fly and how they move through the air. Yeah, it could be. I'm just not aware of a bug that does. Not aware of a bug that would be out in February that would not be visible to my eyes as it flew in front of my face, especially that close. But could it be? Yeah. That EVP? I have a hard time with that one. I have a hard time saying that that one is uh, BS. So um, that's kind of my take on it. Again, I'll let you hear the EVP one more time, and um, it'll close out the episode. So thanks for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe. Um, if you don't like the way we do our episodes, let us know.
Here's the door.